Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Dylan D, and welcome to Season 2 of Dylan D Minecraft. How is everybody doing today? So many people have subscribed since the last time we spoke, and I'd just like to officially welcome you all to the channel. Uh, thank you very much for subscribing. It's definitely a pleasure to have you all along for the ride. And of course, thank you so much to all of my wonderful subscribers for being so patient while I was away. It definitely shows me that you are all enjoying the content and knew that I would eventually return. So yeah, you've also all helped me reach my first personal goal of 1,000 subscribers in just the first five months of uploading videos to YouTube. That on its own is an amazing achievement. So yes, thank you all very much for your support from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I've been working on a lot of projects lately, like the ARC tutorial and other sub-goal tutorials for the console edition subscribers that I assure you I have not forgotten about. I'll even make a Galactus tutorial if you guys want to dedicate some time to a crazy build. It'll take a little time, but those tutorials are coming. I'm planning to make uh, my next video a quick Peekabot tutorial, and I've also even made a Minecraft Pocket Edition Peekabot. Uh, a Pocket Peekabot. <laughs> so no matter what, everybody gets a Peekabot. <laughs> now, for this video today, I have rebuilt all 22 of my, my console slimestone uh, creations on PC, as well as building a few new robots just to throw in some more fun. And I have put links to the world downloads for all of them in the description, including the world download for Galactus, the mech that literally fires walls of missiles, as well as the Ark, a huge sailing slimestone pirate ship with gassed cannons and captain's quarters, expanded through two floors with places to store your loot. Even Apophis, a robot dragon, one of Minecraft's largest slimestone creations, and of course so many more. So you all can download the worlds and stylize and or weaponize these robots however you wish. Now, I'll be explaining how to use every robot I've made as well in this video, so if I've forgotten a demonstration in a previous video on how to use a certain machine, like how to fire the missiles or activate the TNT cannons, uh, example the Ender, <laughs> it can now all be found right here in this video. Times for when I start explaining each robot in the video can also be found in the description with the downloads. Honestly, <laughs> I just encourage everybody to read the description. It's definitely packed full of of links that'll keep you entertained for a long time. Uh, stay tuned until the end of the video for more channel updates and news. Of course, if you feel yourself experiencing some sort of joy while you're watching today's video, then please leave a like. It definitely helps my channel grow. If you'd like to see some more crazy slimestone and redstone creations, I encourage you to subscribe, and as, as it is your subscriptions, positivity, and reactions that fuel my inspiration for these crazy builds. Now, if you couldn't tell, I'm feeling a little under the weather, so I apologize for that, but this video was so exciting and time-consuming, time consuming, I couldn't wait any longer to get it uploaded. So with all that being said, let's jump into today's video. Alright, so first up we have the Ender. Now, the reason I'm starting with the Ender is because in the actual tutorial video, I forgot the demonstration. Now, I can see how this can be frustrating to some people, and I apologize for that. So, of course, we're going to go ahead and just start off with it. Now, in this box, you can find what I have in my hand, of course, plus some goodies. But with all of that aside, we can go ahead and, uh, of course, you'll uh, spawn in about right there uh, where I came in. So. After that, uh, you can actually come up into the machine through uh, the face, which is right here, and you can go ahead and stand on the diamond block. Now, uh, with that being said, here's your redstone torch, and this is obviously, uh, once you break this, the machine will start moving. Now over here, you have your TNT cannon, and over here you have uh, Alex Yu's Juggernaut 2.0 missile. And the TNT cannon is uh, modeled after Cube Hamster's TNT cannon that he made a long time ago. Uh, links in the description, of course. But with all of that being said, uh, what you want to go ahead and do to start it up is just break the redstone torch, and the entire machine will go ahead and start moving forward. Now, uh, with that being known, you can go ahead once it's moved forward one block and go ahead and just stop it. Now, wait for everything to go ahead and catch up and uh, to fire the missile. What you can go ahead and do is this sticky piston to your left. Uh, if you're looking out the front of the machine, you can go ahead and just ignite it, and it's going to go ahead and launch that Juggernaut 2.0 at uh, whatever your target is. Now, with that being known as well, your TNT cannon is right here. Now, you're going to want to place a 
uh, TNT on top of this redstone block. Now to do that though from here, of course, you can't do it from right here unless you jump and place it against that sticky piston, but that's, that's too much work, obviously, right? So what you want to go ahead and do is place a, just look at this sticky piston and you can place it. Now it's going to go ahead and it's going to fire them off. Every now and then it will actually shoot it backwards though. So if you have some enemies behind you, like, I don't know. It's just <laughs> the way I built it the first time uh, in console edition, it just shot straight, but sometimes now it shoots behind. But uh, I don't see it as an issue as it doesn't actually uh, mess up the machine at all falls straight through and then blows up the ground. So yeah, with all that being said, we can actually move out to the shoulder here and uh, that's why this uh, block is here. Uh, coming off of the machine at the bottom is just so we can take off the legs uh, just to say if there's like a village or some wreckage in front of you from you destroying something, you can uh, just take the legs completely off the robot with TNT and you can fly right over it. So hopefully, you know, this works all the same and it looks like it is perfect. So it didn't destroy any slime blocks, which is good. So it's gonna go ahead and update perfectly. So let's see if the same thing happens on this side, of course. And uh, it looks pretty good. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is start it up again. And as you can see, the machine keeps moving. All right, so next up we have the Mantis, which is a little easier to uh, pilot than the Ender, in which uh, we have two uh, dual TNT cannons, long range, uh, the same exact ones that are on the Ender. Now, of course, I haven't released this robot uh, in any tutorial version or anything like that, so that's why this is second, is because it's brand new. Uh, but <laughs> I actually built this uh, almost a year ago, but uh, yeah, so with all of that being said, how to pilot this uh, Mantis, as you can see by its little face up here, uh, how you get in there is right back here and a diamond block again underneath you. Now you can go ahead and stand right here. The only thing you'll need to pilot this uh, is your redstone torch and TNT to ignite the uh, TNT cannons. Now uh, from standing position, all you gotta do is break the redstone torch and the entire machine will start moving forward. Now to stop it, of course, once you move forward one block, just place your redstone torch down and you're good to go. Now. Uh, just to show you guys where the TNT cannon is, it's out here. So it's not here. Don't go placing any redstone blocks that, uh, any TNT that onto redstone blocks that aren't going to do anything. Now, if you are in survival though, uh, you would have to actually go all the way over here and make kind of like a little leap of faith to this block. Now you can do that and you can target right here and it's going to send the TNT flying, but of course you'll jump with it. Now to get back, same thing and you can go and uh, break your redstone torch and keep going. But, uh, yeah, there is that bit of information for you. So with all of that being said, the other side works the exact same and there's the redstone block that you want to place your TNT on. So with all of that, as you can tell, the machine has moved forward and is good to go. And that is how you use the Mantis. All right, so next up we have the PikaBot, the Rybot, and the MewBot. Now, of course, these are new robots that I know uh, no one has seen before. But uh, yeah, I encourage everyone that uh, has PC Edition to actually jump into the world download and check out uh, the full actual aesthetic of each robot, as I put a lot of time and effort into each one to actually make it look like uh, the Pokemon. So yeah. I'm going to go ahead and start with the PikaBot. So coming into this area, I have a piece of obsidian. You actually can go ahead and put one down there to help you get into your robot. And right here, you can uh, see that this is where we'll be standing. And you can actually replace these blocks with uh, glass if you would like. Uh, so you can actually see out the front of PikaBot. But uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and just remove this piece of obsidian back here in the engine. And the PikaBot will move forward. Now, once you get time to move forward, you can go ahead and place a piece of obsidian or any removable block along uh, this wall of blocks here. I'm going to go ahead and catch up. And as soon as you do that, you can see that Pigabot has all moved forward. Now, next up, we also have the Rybot. And put a place uh, in a movable block here. I'm going to go ahead and jump up into the machine, break the MC, and it works just like a Pigabot, as you can see. And it's actually the same thing, it's just the blocks are, uh, that make it up are different. So you can go ahead and place in a movable 
block along that wall of blocks and it will stop. So once you know all this, we're going to go ahead and move up here to <laughs> the MuBot. Now I'm going to go ahead and toggle this downfall. And once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and jump inside the machine where you can find a piece of obsidian. Now this machine, uh, obviously you can't really see out the front, so you don't really know where you're going. It's not the greatest uh, time experience when flying. It's very advanced in the aspect that you have to move forward as it uh, moves forward. Uh, or else you will fall into the machine and could possibly fall out. So uh, to prevent that, the only thing that I can really say is uh, try your hardest to follow these instructions. So once I uh, break out this obsidian here, uh, the MuBot will move forward. Now I'm going to have to either place an immovable block against the back of this piston to stop the machine, which it'll eventually fall back to here, or turn around and place the obsidian again. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my back to this wall, break out the obsidian, and turn around and start moving forward. Now, once we have this, I'm going to attempt to, <laughs> to stop the machine uh, the best I can. And we did it. Yeah, awesome. So yeah, that's how you would go about stopping Mew. Now if I can fly out of here, you can see that the MuBot is perfectly moved forward, just like the other two. Yeah, so I hope you guys really enjoy uh, these concepts. Let me know down in the comments, of course, if you'd like me to continue making uh, Pokebots in the future. But yeah, that's how you use these three robots. Next up, we have the Red Sandstone and Purpur uh, Hover Sports Cars. Uh, now, these have a built-in cruiser missile engine. Uh, that is right here. Now the uh, only trick to them, honestly, is uh, starting them up and actually getting into the front of the vehicle up here. Now uh, I just kind of made these out of impulse one day uh, because I wanted to use them for a War of the Machines video, but more on uh, War of the Machines at the uh, end of the video and the uh, additional updates and whatnot. So uh, how to pilot this machine is you want to be kind of like on the this redstone block but kind of to the side so you can see uh, the top of this upside down uh, staircase at the bottom of the machine. Once you update, uh, <laughs> once you update right here, uh, the machine is going to start to propel forward. So you're going to want to be ready to turn around and uh, run, jump into the driver's seat. Now, of course, you could stand right here and you could pilot it from right there, and you'd be just fine. And all you'd have to do is just place an immovable block up uh, along this glass, and it would stop the machine. So yeah, uh, knowing all that, all you have to do is update that. And you turn around, start running and jump and as you can see we are now in the front of the machine so I'm going to go hook, uh, ahead and move over to the side as much as possible uh, and once I am done with my joy ride what I'm going to go ahead and do is just place a, a movable block right here and uh, as soon as that uh, catches up to the engine you can see that it will stop it so yeah it is just that easy uh, the, this machine and that one back there both hover cars work the uh, exact same way so of course uh, I also want to uh, stress to you guys that I'm hoping to make uh, more actual slime block vehicles like a semi truck and whatnot uh, in a uh, later video uh, later video so yeah stay tuned for that but uh, that is how to use the hover cars next up we have the very user-friendly uh, jackrabbit and bunny tank robots now uh, with that being said these robots are very easy to use now uh, on PC edition of course you no longer need the boat as the robot will push you forward on its own so in, uh, in order to actually uh, start the machine up, which we're going to go ahead and do is ignite down here, which will ignite this sticky piston and actually move it forward, but if you just ignite the top, it's just going to zero tick it backwards. So what we're going to go ahead and do is ignite down here, and your jackrabbit will move forward. Now to stop it, all you got to do is ignite the piston underneath you, and to uh, get this back in place, you can place a redstone torch here or here, and I've chosen there, and as you can see, it will uh, catch back up. So. Uh, it is the same exact thing over here on the bunny tank. You just ignite here to actually start the machine up and uh, keep it moving. And then ignite once on the bottom to stop it. Redstone torch there, and as you can see, it is ready to be ridden again. So yeah, uh, really easy, user-friendly. Of course, can't wait to see uh, what people do with it and how they weaponize it. Should be very interesting. But yeah, that's how to use the jackrabbit and the bunny tank. All right, next up we have the raptor-shaped robot, the Velocicus. Now, you can't really see it from the outside, but uh, inside the machine is a little different. Uh, this is a new start-stop engine. So 
Uh, with that being said, all you have to do is stand right here in front of the diamond block and update uh, this sticky piston right here, and the entire machine will start to move forward. Now, to stop the machine, it is just as easy as updating this sticky piston again right before the machine moves forward. So, as soon as you know all that, that is the Velocicus and how to use it. And, uh, yeah, next up is the weaponized version. Alright, so the Velocicus Dragoon is the weaponized version of the Velocicus, which the two weapons that I've added are uh, two TNT cannons, which I actually did not develop. I do not know how to pronounce the name, but the uh, link to the original maker of those TNT cannons will be in the description. Along with, though, uh, two missiles uh, that are added to the front of that are my design. Now, the reason that it's completely covered in blocks like this is just to protect the overall missile from, like, fire arrows or something like that such. But yeah, once you know all that, what we're going to go ahead and do is come into the machine from this direction and uh, pop in right here where this redstone torch is. Now, as soon as I remove this redstone torch, we will move forward. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And as you can tell, uh, the machine is going to move very slowly so we can actually traverse it and get in front of this block. Now, in order to use these TNT cannons right after it moves forward, you can place a piece of TNT against these redstone blocks and it will fire off the TNT, uh, actually pretty far. So to ignite, uh, to actually set these missiles in motion, you can go ahead and place a redstone block here on that slime block, and one on this slime block. And to stop the machine, you can actually go ahead and just run back into it, grab your redstone torch, and place it there. Now we can go watch these missiles explode. <laughs> As you can tell, does some pretty awesome damage. But yeah, that is how to use the Velocicus Dragoon. Alright, so next up we have the Omnitops and the Omnitops Dino Tank. Now, for this demonstration, I'm only going to be demonstrating how to use the Omnitops Dino Tank, as all uh, the Omnitops has is its engine. Uh, but yeah, uh, these both. Uh, World downloads will be two separate world downloads, just in case you want to go ahead and weaponize the Omnitops however you wish. But with all that being said, you want to go ahead and enter the robot this direction. Next up, you want to fly all the way back over to uh, the Subsidian, or of course, if you're in survival or anything like that, you can uh, just build up something in the back uh, off to the corner of one of these pistons and you should be all good to go. Now, in order to pilot this, what you can go ahead and do is remove this obsidian and the machine will start uh, moving. Now you can use any immovable block that you wish, of course that will work as well, as long as it's immovable. Now, uh, to stop the machine, as you can see here you're on this path that you will be walking on, there's nothing that will actually push you forward. Uh, as you're walking, uh, all you have to do is turn around and place a block behind you and it'll stop. So, demonstrate real fast, just to remove that obsidian and as you can see we move forward and you kind of just got to walk or else the, you know, the pathway it just moves underneath you, and if I wanted to stop it, just have to turn around and place an immovable block. It'll eventually catch up, and we're good to go. Now, as you can see, everything's good to go. So, to get out uh, to the missiles and whatnot, let's say you're in uh, survival, what you want to go ahead and do is come out this way, and that's okay if you fall, you can jump over to this redstone block. I'm going to come over to the right side of the machine and jump uh, this little gap here, and now you can see this actual uh, sticky piston facing straight up, and as soon as I ignite it, this will launch the uh, one of the tunnel board missiles off the machine. Now to get to the top, uh, to mess around with the, the reloadable six-shot TNT cannons, what you want to go ahead and do is come up this way, and then go over here to uh, either side of the stairs, and then just kind of take this uh, little pathway up, of course, trying not to uh, fall how I just did. We'll go ahead and do that one more time. Jump up on top of here, and then you can make your way over to this middle uh, segment. Now, as soon as we are here, uh, we're actually going to be messing with this sticky piston. Now, you can see the tunnel board just blew up, and of course, links into the description uh, for the original video uh, for Alex Yu's tunnel board. Uh, but yeah, so with that being said, let's go ahead and pilot uh, this uh, reloadable TNT cannons. Uh, now, how you do this is obviously there's a reloading mechanism and whatnot with the sand, and I'll show you how to reload it. But to fire it off, you want to go ahead and come up to this uh, sticky piston here facing into this redstone block, and you can go ahead and update it. Oh, not from the front, though. You do not want to update it from the front. Go ahead and 
grab a redstone block from the top I mean you want to update it from the side so what I mean by that is right here and as you can see this will actually start to fire off TNT and uh, how this works is the sand moves along uh, this one caterpillar engine and as this slime block moves it moves the sand forward uh, because of the other slime block in the engine itself. Uh, it's pretty tricky. You'd have to actually kind of watch it to actually fully understand it. So yeah, uh, you can actually just go ahead and keep updating this. Obviously not from the top though, from the side. So it actually doesn't zero ticket until it runs out of TNT and sand and all that. And boom, as you can see, we've dug some holes. It's done its damage. Now to reload it, you actually have to uh, walk the machine forward. So uh, to demonstrate that really quick, you want it to move forward six blocks. Now uh, you can move it forward any number more. It doesn't have to be just six, but it has to be six in order to reload it properly. So in order to do that, you can actually just set down a block uh, about right here on this piston, and this will give it the seven block, uh, the seven blocks. <laughs> this will give it a, a seven block movement. So I'm going to go ahead and do that just in case, you know, and then we'll actually set this in motion. And I'll come back up here so you can actually see that this, uh, this engine is sitting still until it's caught up to. Now, as it's moving normally, as you can tell uh, from what you just saw, this piston is pushing uh, the rest of the Caterpillar engine forward. And when it does that, uh, this piston is extended, so this sticky piston cannot extend it, and so it's not... Uh, properly it can't update fully. So with that being known, uh, what you can go ahead and do is when you walk all the way back up into your machine, you can come over to this little uh, walkway right here. And how to reload it, you want to go ahead and place your sand first. So you want a piece of sand on the top of each of these uh, pieces of glass and as soon as you do that you can actually place your TNT one here and that will update uh, the caterpillar engine to move forward you can add two three four five six but you want to go ahead and uh, get rid of that TNT and place it here so as soon as you have uh, all of this it is reloaded and ready f to be fired again now you can do the same thing to this side but yeah just for the the demonstration and the length sake of this video I'm going to go ahead and make the same mistake a third time <laughs> and update it from the side. So that is the key. And then as soon as you fire off everything, you can go ahead and move forward another six blocks and you should be good to go. But that is how to use uh, the Omnitops Dino Tank and the Omnitops. And the last thing that I actually uh, forgot to mention about the Omnitops is that everything inside the machine is rigged to explode if it makes any sort of contact with any sort of wall or anything like that, that it cannot pass. So to demonstrate that real quick, I'm going to go ahead and remove the subsidian. And we're going to go ahead and see this uh, run into the subsidian in front here. And as you can see, TNT ignites within the machine and it becomes a memory. <laughs> Yeah, so that's how that works, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it, but yeah, it has a kamikaze mode. Alright, so next up we have the Jackal DX7 Fighter Jet. Now the world download actually comes with uh, four of them, just as you see here, and as you can tell on the bottom, uh, I've actually replaced the cruiser missile with a mini cruiser missile. Now, uh, yeah, it's just as easy as you see here. Now, uh, to pilot this machine, I've also... Uh, made a little piece to where after you start the engine of the jet you can actually make your way into the cockpit area three you can actually sit in the cockpit now and fly the jet so uh yeah i think that's pretty fun although the uh kind of tricky part about it is getting back to the engine so yeah just knowing all that, what you're going to go ahead and do is ignite this uh, sticky piston in front of you uh, to start the machine, and I'm going to go ahead and do that for you. Now, as soon as you ignite it twice, the machine will start to move forward, and as you can tell, the missile's coming along too. Now, to stop it, all you got to do is update it a couple times, kind of just rapid fire until it stops, <laughs> and as you can tell, everything has uh, come with. So yeah, that is how to fly the jet. Now, how to get up into the cockpit while it's moving is a little bit more uh, tricky. So we're gonna go ahead and start that up. So as we're moving, we wanna go ahead and move to one side and then come up this way, probably go into a sprint and try to jump. And go into a sprint again, and boom, there you go. So it is a little tricky, but it's, it's pretty easy as long as you time it. And now you are actually in the cockpit of the machine. 
flying along so you can actually see. Now to stop it, what you're going to have to go ahead and do is jump out, kind of come to the side, just like how I did, and then you're back uh, to where you can stop your machine. Now to uh, fire these missiles on the bottom, very easy. The triggers are right here, so this one will fire this missile, and of course this one will fire that missile down there. So in order to do that, you want to update this sticky piston twice, and to do that there's once, and then there's twice. Now this missile, as you can see, is one block in front of this one, which now it is primed and ready to fire. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is do the same thing to the other one, which you don't have to. You can just update one at a time, and it will still do the same thing. And then I'm going to go ahead and start the machine, which it looks like it has zero ticked the uh, engine back. So all you got to do is grab a redstone block, place it right there, and then break it. So yeah, as you can tell, the uh, missiles will now fire off. And of course, the engine that the missile has is much faster than the uh, jackal itself. So it'll outrun the machine, even if you wanted to keep it moving. So yeah, as you can tell, uh, the missiles will fly off. These uh, the mini cruisers will fly off into the distance, and they can actually take uh, quite a bit of <laughs> blocks with them before actually having to stop and uh, explode. So we'll see if that explosion catches up. Whew, it doesn't, which is nice, which is a good feature to have, you know. So there you go. That is how uh, to pilot and use the Jackal DX7 fighter jet. Alright, so next up we have the Angler, which is a flying gassed turret. So uh, what this machine does is uh, it flies the gas along and you can actually sit in front here. Uh, what you would do is stand on this cobblestone block as the machine uh, moves forward. And you want to uh, make sure to actually move with the cobblestone block as well as there's nothing to actually uh, push you forward. And this is only just so, you know, I could fit in as much end stone as possible to try to protect uh, the slime blocks. So uh, knowing that, uh, how this machine works is uh, pretty tricky. What you're going to want to go ahead and do is uh, first stand here. Now, uh, when you're standing here, you are safe from the gas even when you remove this uh, cobblestone. So, uh, in order to pilot the machine, what you want to go ahead and do is get ready by removing this piece of cobblestone up there. Next up, what you can go ahead and do is uh, switch your game mode over to survival. And now, once you've done that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and ingest a golden apple to uh, hopefully elongate uh, my my ride. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is update the side of this sticky piston here once and then twice to get the actual machine going. And as soon as it moves forward is when you want to jump up there. So it move forward once and you want to go ahead and listen. So I'm going to go into focus mode. So what you want to do is listen for it. Ugh. So, <laughs> yeah, obviously, uh, it's kind of uh, tricky to actually pilot, but that's okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty tricky to pilot, but at the same time, uh, it definitely offers up a pretty unique, fun uh, ride and uh, battle situation to any sort of, like, robot fight. Uh, that cobblestone that is in the machine, it does not move with the machine, uh, this one over here. So uh, this piece of cobblestone, as you can see, uh, we, we got some pretty good hits in on this one. But uh, this piece of uh, cobblestone here, it does not, it's not connected to anything, so it will not move along with the actual build itself. So that's just something to uh, keep in mind. That is how <laughs> you operate the angler. Uh, I would hope that you guys like that one. Uh, it's pretty tricky to pilot, but honestly, once you get it down, it's, it's pretty fun, and uh, with two people, it could be even funner. So, yeah, there's the angler. All right, finally getting into the bigger machines, we have the Trihorn, which is just a smaller version of my much larger dragon, Apophis. Now, uh, this dragon mech here, though, has no weapons, so I definitely... 
I definitely look forward to uh, everyone's uh, weaponization for this uh, machine. So in order to pilot it, what you want to go ahead and do is come down uh, this direction and get into here up to this block and then stand on it. And how you can tell is it's the blocks underneath uh, that obsidian. So uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do to pilot this machine is just break that uh, piece of obsidian that you guys see here and the entire machine will move forward. Now, uh, once you've had enough uh, moving around, flying your dragon, what you can go ahead and do is look at this uh, row of blocks here and then place your immovable block. Now, what will happen is, is this uh, obsidian here will eventually catch up to the overall machine and stop it. So once your machine is stopped and you can go out and look and you can see that everything was uh, brought along. So yeah, that is how to pilot the trihorn and uh, yeah, that's it for that. All right, so next on the list is the Pterodactyl and the Terra Obliterator. Now, these are pterodactyl-shaped robots in Minecraft, uh, one of which is weaponized, and the weaponized version is just this uh, with some weapons on it. So, of course, uh, the world downloads will be separate, so just in case you want to uh, weaponize the original robot however you wish. So with that being known, uh, what is on the side here are four bomber modules on each side for a total of eight, where you can actually go ahead and uh, fly along, fly to wherever you wish, and go ahead and bomb it. So we're going to go ahead and bomb this village. And uh, so to show you how to do that in this machine, what you can go ahead and do is go up to uh, this diamond block here. And you can go ahead and stand in front of it like so. So the glass is uh, facing forward, just so to clarify. Now, next up, in order to fly this machine, you want to go ahead and uh, update this sticky piston twice. And uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is fly over to that village so we can actually bomb it. So there you are, two uh, updates of that sticky piston, and we are flying along. Now, let's go ahead and fly to this village. Alright, so now that I feel like I'm out I'm over the actual girth of this village, all I have to do is turn around and kind of rapid fire update this uh, sticky piston until it actually stops. And you can see that the machine has now visually caught up to uh, where we are. Now, next up, what you want to go ahead and do is update this sticky piston and then this one, or you can do this one first and then this one, doesn't really matter. And then TNT will start to drop, and then I'm going to go ahead and update uh, this engine again. So, of course, the machine will keep moving with the, the redstone blocks up. Uh, placed along those bomber modules will be in a different location as it's pushed forward uh, igniting all this TNT that you see. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, update that one. As you can see some TNT has fallen. I'm going to update that one, some more TNT, and then we're going to go ahead and continue flying forward. Now as you can see TNT is going to start to rain down from the robot and destroy everything in its path. Now once we've gone ahead and destroyed everything we want to, we can actually go ahead and uh, update the engine to stop the machine once again and uh, to reload the machine what you want to go ahead and do from in front of your diamond block is turn around jump over it uh, jump to this sticky piston climb up the stairs now you can actually follow the stairs uh, to wherever uh, side whichever side you wish just make sure not to fall off now once you get to this area It's pretty safe. You got your your iron bars. So here is the first uh, Reloading module now you can easily stand here in survival and reload it obviously if you were to uh, retract the redstone blocks Which I'll go ahead and do really quick. So after you bomb it, of course, just remember to uh, Retract all those redstone blocks and this is how you would do that. So now that those redstone blocks are back into a place where they should be, you can grab your TNT and you want to go ahead and place 10 pieces of TNT total off of each bomber module. So there's one here, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then there's one over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's another right back here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then the last one is right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So just knowing that, you can actually, uh, you know, mirror it up on the other side, and your machine is ready to bomb uh, more places. So yeah, you can take off, and everything will be safe and ready to go, just as long as you don't go over those uh, ten TNT. But yeah, knowing all that, that is how you use the Terror Dactyl and the Terra Obliterator.
All right, so next up on the giant robot list is the Rapticus. Now, uh, this robot right here is basically like just the staple of my channel. Uh, just considering that it was the first robot that I actually made uh, in Minecraft after getting the game and everything like that. Uh, I know it's huge for it to be like the first machine, but I just wanted to build big, so that's what I ended up doing. So uh, with that being said, uh, unfortunately, I won't be... Uh, demonstrating how to use the front TNT cannons because they no longer work in the 1.9 and above versions of Minecraft. So I know I've been trying to keep up with uh, updating this robot as much as I've had it over the past year that I've been on YouTube, but hopefully I'll get uh, some more time in the near future to upgrade it again so these TNT cannons will work. But of course you guys can upgrade them and uh, weaponize it however you wish now with the world download but yeah with that being said that also goes for my uh, console edition subscribers as well uh, if you've built the Rapticus in your world uh, I apologize but it no longer works but hey you know that's Minecraft that's what happens it updates it changes a bunch of stuff and we can no longer do some cool stuff that we wish we could but hey that's all right. Uh, but yeah, with all that being said, uh, everything else still works just fine. Uh, the machine still moves forward just fine. And uh, yeah, so with that being known, what you want to go ahead and do is head in this direction towards uh, this diamond block, and you can go ahead and stand on it. Now, uh, looking over here to this sticky piston, obviously this is forward. Looking at this sticky piston here, what we can go ahead and do is update it, and the entirety of the machine will begin to move forward. So, um, once we're done and don't really want to move forward anymore, or we've gotten to where we need to go, uh, once it moves forward, you can go ahead and update it again. That redstone block right there uh, actually gets pushed back, and the engine then runs into it and is unable to update any uh, anymore. So yeah, with that being said, uh, right behind you, so here's the engine, this is what you updated, right behind you is a trigger uh, to your right and to your left which activates its respective tunnel bore missile. So what you want to go ahead and do to activate uh, each tunnel bore missile is just update uh, the sticky piston to each side. You want to go ahead and update it twice though so uh, none of the, the pieces of the machine don't actually fall off as you pilot it. So uh, knowing that you've actually fired both of your tunnel bore missiles. Now you can fire your cruisers first if you wanted to or your tunnel bores. I'm just moving along, uh, moving through. What you want to go ahead to uh, and do to fire off these cruiser missiles is just place a piston up against this redstone block right here and of course uh, same goes for the other side. Now uh, of course you can also fire these missiles while the machine moves uh, just good luck getting out here uh, as it's moving but uh, other than that you can go ahead and come back to the engine and as soon as you move forward you can see that the missiles will just launch off so once you do that, you can go ahead and stop the machine again, and eventually these uh, missiles will make contact with the uh, other Rapticus that I have over here, and there will be a pretty awesome explosion. So I'll basically, uh, I'll just cut to that really quick. And as you can see, it's done an insane amount of damage to the other robot. But yeah, with all of that uh, being known, uh, that is how you use the Rapticus. Next up, we have the Ultima Gast Cannon. So if you ever wanted to blow up your friends with a bunch of ghasts, this is the way to do it. So uh, overall, as far as weapons go on this machine, you have two Gast missiles and two Juggernaut 2.0 missiles on the top. Uh, original creator is Alex Yu. Of course, there will be a link in the description to the original video. So yes, of course, with all that being said, you want to go up uh, to this point and uh, drop down onto this slime block here. Now, you're actually uh, going to be moving forward as the machine moves forward. Uh, the only reason you have to stand here and instead of standing in there is just so if you're in survival these ghasts on uh, to the side of you do not fire off and uh, actually succeed in hitting you. So knowing that to uh, pilot the machine all you have to do is get rid of that redstone torch and move forward one block when the block underneath you does. Just like so. So uh, of course this is very simple, uh, very easy to understand. 
understand, so as soon as it moves forward, you can actually go ahead and replace that redstone torch to stop the machine. Uh, next up, we can go ahead and grab our TNT, and we can actually come over here. As you can see, there is a redstone block. Now, uh, to activate the TNT cannons, all you have to do is place a piece of uh, TNT right here. As you can see, it will fire off, and you can actually come over this way a little bit more to fire off the other one. And uh, yeah, it actually fires backwards, of course, too, just like the other uh, machines. But of course, you can tell that it actually doesn't uh, mess with anything, which is good. So yeah. You have uh, the two fire back, and there you go. So, knowing that, what you can actually go ahead and do to fire uh, the missiles that you uh, see here uh, is this right here uh, will fire this Juggernaut 2.0, and then this one will fire the other one. So, we can actually go ahead and uh, do that really quick. You can just update that, and you see this missile launch off. Same with this one, that missile will now launch off as well. Now, to launch the gassed missiles, you want to go ahead and come back this way until you are back here. Then you want to go ahead and uh, jump up into this area and locate this sticky piston uh, facing straight up, and you can actually go ahead and update it, and it will launch off. And it's the uh, same exact way uh, with the other side. You can go across this way and uh, find this redstone block, come up this way, update the sticky piston, and you're good to go. Now, of course, uh, wanted to come over here we can actually see uh, that everything is moving and uh, blowing up how it should so yeah as you can tell the gas missile even survived that initial explosion from the juggernaut 2.0 and is on its way to detonating now of course the rest of the machine uh, will move forward and if you have any uh, of your friends or anybody that you're playing with out here uh, it will eventually as you can see, that gas missile uh, works just fine as well. And of course, uh, these all these gas will of course fire off at anybody else that you're playing with. But yeah, that is how to use the Ultima gas cannon, and uh, that's it for this one. Next up, we have the Nightmare Express, which is just a uh, massive weaponized moving uh, slime block train. So what we have in front of us is the weaponized version listed on my channel as the Nightmare Grinder. Now, uh, I'm just going to be calling it the Nightmare Express because I like that name a little bit more. But uh, knowing all this and uh, what we see, we got a lot to go over. So starting up, we're going to go ahead and come over to these uh, birch doors only on the right side of the train if you are facing it from the front. So you want to come up to these uh, birch gates, go ahead and open them, and then you can come in here and you can actually sit on the uh, diamond block. I can actually get in there. Anyway, <laughs> next up, when you uh, this is the front uh, where all this TNT is. No, no worries, it will not ignite unless you uh, slam this robot into another robot. So knowing that, you can look behind you, and there is uh, this sort of setup, which is an engine. Now you can actually go ahead and update this sticky piston as long as there's no immovable block here to get things moving forward. So you can go ahead and do that, and as you can see, the entire uh, train will begin to move forward. You are now the conductor. So knowing all of this, if you want to go ahead and stop, you can actually just aim at the back of the slime block after it moves forward, and you can uh, throw down any immovable block there. So once you've done that, you can see that the train has uh, come to a halt. But what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to set it in motion and then uh, show you how to use the uh, side, mountain, side mounted B01 TNT cannons on the back. So let's go ahead and set this back into motion. And I'm going to go ahead and jump out this way. Now, coming back in this direction, here is your side mounted B01 TNT cannon. So if I were standing right here, what you can go ahead and do is look at this direction here, and as you can tell, uh, these blocks are kind of firing off, and if you aim it perfectly like that, as you can see, it will fire off the TNT. Now you actually have one on the opposite side as well. And there you go. And that's how you do it. you got to time it kind of perfectly. Now, uh, but you also have three of these along the entire length of the back of the robot. So, just knowing that, that is how you use the uh, side-mounted B01 TNT cannons, which of course links in the description to uh, Cube Hamster's original video on that.
course, that is not the last thing that the Nightmare Express uh, can do. In 1.8, uh, the version of Minecraft that I actually built the Nightmare Express in, uh, you're actually able to update the engine and it would go into a speed mode, basically, and the, the engine would go twice as fast is what it went uh, last time. But unfortunately, uh, in 1.9 and above, so yes, of course, this goes for the console subscribers again, uh, the engine no longer goes into its speed mode. But, of course, not all is lost. It actually self-destructs the machine now, which honestly, in my opinion, is still something that's really awesome and can still be used in a slime block machine. But not only that, if it's still going the same exact speed, you can still run this machine into another one and it will blow up on impact. So, of course, the, uh, the potential is still all there. It's still just as fine as it is and now instead of it going super fast and running into something it just explodes so you know and <laughs> so to, I'm going to show you how to just self detonate this thing uh, and it's very easy all you do is look over here at uh, this sticky piston update it and as soon as that sand uh, comes out all you have to do is update the engine again and the machine will actually push you out as soon as it begins going boom and then if you, you can actually go ahead and run in any direction that you wish, but uh, it's just going to go ahead and explode. So yeah, that is the self-destruct process. You, as you can see, it gives you some time to actually run away from the machine if you wish. But yeah, that is the rest of the Nightmare Express uh, demonstration. All right, next up we have the Megalodon, uh, one of my favorite designs uh, by far. The Megalodon just very much is uh, picture perfect for what I believe uh, Slimestone can actually be. Uh, the fact that you can actually make robots to a, to a shape and actually have it move and it can be uh, a perfect aesthetic of whatever it is that you wish it to be. But yeah, with the, all that aside, uh, in the original video of the Megalodon, in the inside of the mouth, I actually had uh, eight regular cruiser missiles, but now in uh, this updated version, I've swapped all of those out for those mini cruiser missiles that we saw earlier on the Jackal DX-7 fighter jet. So of course, uh, they all fire while the machine is moving, and to demonstrate how to do that, I will be going ahead and doing that. So of course, you guys don't have to worry about the obsidian. Uh, the obsidian shouldn't be in there. Uh, at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, demonstrate how to use it. So what you want to go ahead and do is come in through the mouth and they come all the way back to right here where this redstone block and sticky piston are. Now you're going to go ahead and update this once and then twice to actually get the machine going. Now as you can see we are starting to move forward. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start making some jumps all the way out there so we can launch the front missiles first. Now of course I should have been prepared. Well, I'm going to go ahead and grab a piston to take with us and now we can go ahead and walk out there. Some jumps, some leaps of faith. All right, we have made it to where we need to be. All right, so uh, on these first missiles, all you have to do is right after the machine moves forward, go ahead and uh, place your piston just like so. And as you can see, it will launch the missiles. Same on the uh, Rapticus as well. So there is that, and boom, that's going to go ahead and launch that missile, and then looking down here, we can go ahead and do the same thing, and that will launch that missile, and then one more for uh, to wrap up the front uh, rows of missiles, and as you can see, the pistons will uh, fire off in every different direction there, so we are good to go, so I'm actually going to go ahead and move backwards to the beginning, where we started out, uh, over here on the top, you can actually go ahead and uh, place a piston like normal right here and it will fire off the missile same with right here but the bottom ones unfortunately you have to actually come up to the front piece here and as soon as you are here you can actually look back and you're actually trying to aim for this location here so as soon as you have it like that boom as you can see you will launch the missile perfectly fine uh, if you were to have it if you were to <laughs> sorry if you were to launch the uh, missile from the starting position the piston would be facing back towards uh, this slime block here as you saw it almost stopped almost had a heart attack <laughs> but it didn't uh, and yeah so instead of jamming the machine 
14, you can just come up that one extra block and you should be all good to go. So yeah, those are all just visual glitches, of course. So I'm going to go in here and stop the machine, because to stop it, all you have to do is come back to where you started it. And if I can fall, there we are. All we have to do is update this sticky piston a couple of times until it stops. And as you can see, the machine stops just fine. Uh, now, these mini cruiser missiles are just going to keep on going because I haven't put anything out here to stop them. So while those are flying, what I'm going to go ahead and do is tell you the last little thing about the Megalodon is that when it stops, uh, a couple pieces of it stop uh, a little further back. You can't really tell except unless you come like right here and, and look. Now it's actually, uh, you can start it up again and it will keep moving just fine, but if you want uh, to visually fix the aesthetic, there is the piston right here that is jammed up and you can go ahead and hit it and it will move forward the entire rest of the machine and same with this side. And as you can see, uh, the actual build has been put back together right here. But of course, uh, if you don't catch that and you end up starting up the machine again, it's perfectly fine. It's not going to break it. But yeah, that is how you use the Megalodon. All right, nearing the end of the video here, we have Apophis, uh, another one of my favorite uh, machines by far that I've ever built. Uh, it took about four days for me to actually build Apophis. The first day was spent actually making the engine and this whole uh, front head piece. The second day was actually making the tail. The third day was making the first uh, wing, and the fourth day was spent mirroring that wing and uh, uh, putting on these arms. So yeah, it, a lot of time, a lot of effort went into uh, this build, and honestly, I kept a hold of it for so long. It's uh, really nice, it's really refreshing to actually be able to uh, put out world downloads and everything so everybody can actually uh, enjoy this creature as well. So with all that being said, what you want to go ahead and do is come up into the build right here where these diamond blocks are. We're going to be go ahead and uh, we're going to be standing right here on this slime block. So uh, the whole thing about this though is that there has to be an obsidian timer in it as it can be pretty ridiculously uh, hard to stop unless there is one. So uh, with that being known, what we're going to go ahead and do is place a piece of obsidian right here between these two uh, magma blocks. The reason being is uh, after a certain amount of blocks, of course, that obsidian will catch back up to the engine. And this is, of course, just to prevent uh, lag spikes from stopping you to uh, from uh, stopping the machine. Because I knew uh, long, long ago on console version, there was a time where uh, if I did not place this piece of obsidian, then the entire build would look like this whole side was warped forward and this whole side looked like it was broken, but it was actually still moving. It was actually still fine. It's just that the game can't render thousands of blocks moving at once unless you have uh, a better computer like what we're rocking now. So we'll definitely see uh, what we're working with. So as uh, that is all been said, what you can go ahead and do is remove this obsidian and Apophis will begin to fly forward. Now, as you can see, we are already beginning to move forward and uh, catch up to this obsidian. Now this is a good time to also tell you that if you actually look down at this redstone block right here, you can place TNT as you fly and bomb the ground underneath you, which honestly is one of my favorite uh, things. Uh, and you actually do it over here as well. And yeah, and that is actually uh, in the first video of Apophis uh, actually flying. That is what I'm doing. Is I'm, uh, I'm bombing that village. So yeah. With all of that being known, with that obsidian catching up as well, we can go out here and make sure everything has caught up. And as you can see, the entirety of Apophis has flown forward and caught up with us. And as you can see down here, we've also caused a little bit of damage. So yeah. With all of that being known, that is how you fly Apophis. Now, of course, if you're in the world with anybody else and you're in survival and they're like down here on the ground or maybe up here and they're actually visible uh, to these ghasts, these ghasts will fire the uh, fireballs at them. So yeah, that is how you fly Apophis. Now, of course, uh, everything looks pretty good inside the machine if you're on PC. So you, uh, as long as you have a good PC, you don't have to really use the obsidian timer. You can place that piece of obsidian or immovable block whenever you feel. But yeah, that is how you use Apophis. Next up, we have the Ark, tied for first as one of my favorite uh, machines that I've ever built of all time. Uh, simply because when I was actually even rebuilding it on PC, there was nothing in the actual build itself that I changed. There was nothing in it that I thought that I needed to change or add. Uh, yeah, overall, this machine uh, 
was exactly what I wanted it to be when I built it first up and it still to this day remains exactly that. So in the hull of the ship here we have three ghasts and of course they fire out if uh, there's any sort of enemy or anything uh, out here <laughs> to be fired at. Uh, if they are in survival, of course. Now, uh, the Ark is very uh, user-friendly, really easy to use, and it comes with some uh, pretty cool features, uh, those gas being one, and of course, uh, the captain's quarters. Now, uh, before we fly it, I just want to go ahead and show you the captain's quarters and how to get to them. Of course, you uh, just walk in this way. You want to be careful of this uh, little hole here. You want to come up this direction, and you can actually open these gates, and uh, no worries. If they are open, rather if they're open, if they're closed, doesn't matter. Uh, they are actually a piece of the engine. That's why it's made out of end stone here. And the engine will still update normally and move forward regardless of their position. So, of course, with that being known, we can actually come upstairs and as you can see up here we have some chests and uh, in these chests we have loot so yeah a bunch of awesome stuff for you guys uh, to come in and uh, check out and of course you can decorate it however you wish as long as it's not moving and uh, yeah and of course this was actually added in uh, I, I guess I did add one thing but it was just uh, purely aesthetic to actually be able to come out onto the back of the ship and look out and uh, yeah so that's that's basically uh, all that I actually added in here so now with all of that being said what we can go ahead and do is come back down this way and out of here and uh, go actually pilot the machine so just to show you those can be open they could be closed doesn't matter uh, we're gonna actually go ahead and come out here and that's how you uh, traverse uh, that's how you traverse the captain's quarters uh, walking. So of course, uh, with, there's no more boat uh, any longer. All you have to do is come up these stairs here and settle yourself up on this perch right here. So to activate to uh, activate the arc, all you have to do is update this sticky piston right to your bottom right. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna update it once, and then you're gonna go ahead and update it a second time to actually get it to start moving forward. And as you can see, we're flying. Now we are the captain of the vessel, and it, we even have a hook in our in our right hand, <laughs> the flint and steel. So yeah, once you've had enough of uh, pirating the high seas, what you can actually go ahead and do is aim at this slime block, and as soon as you move forward, you can activate that sticky piston and your machine will come to a halt. Now, uh, that is basically it. That is all there is to know about uh, the Ark and this awesome machine. Of course, uh, there is a lookout up here, but unfortunately you do have to fly to it. Unless, of course, you could parkour it up here somehow, and I don't know how you do that, but hey, let me know. But yep, here's your lookout, and of course you could sit here, and this will all move forward as the machine moves forward, so you and your friends can have a great time piloting this thing. So yeah, there is uh, Tied for First, one of my favorite machines of all time, the Ark. And for the last robot of the video, we have Galactus. Uh, tied for first again as my all-time favorite robot. Uh, build time, I would say, for Galactus was just over a month. Uh, it took a really long time for me to actually build Galactus to actually get everything precisely how I wanted it, as you can tell. Uh, Galactus holds over 500 missiles, which is by far insane it's just insane now uh, as far as the tournament goes I'm not gonna give away anything but uh, I will say that Galactus did not make it to the finals but that is okay I had a wonderful time I got to meet some incredible slime stone engineers and I learned a lot and that was what I really wanted to take away from this that experience was just some sort of knowledge as to uh, make me a better uh, Minecrafter overall. So yeah, I would say that I succeeded in doing so. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the demonstration portion of this. Now, Galactus, of course, uh, may look very menacing, but is actually very easy to use. Uh, it has a one-step manual engine. Now, we can actually come in this direction and start off right here. Now, uh, we don't need this redstone block, <laughs> but uh, yes, it has a one-step manual trigger, and to actually come back to the engine, you come all the way back to the back of the machine. So, 
uh, in order to power this machine, all you will do is update the side of uh, this sticky piston, and it will, of course, move uh, one block forward. Then the next time that you update it, it will uh, recenter the middle legs here, and then the next time after that is when it will take another step forward. So every other time you update the engine, it will take a step. So uh, what you want to go ahead and do first uh, to actually activate the machine and uh, fire off some missiles is uh, you want to come over uh, from the inside when you, where you came up at. You want to come in to right here where we have uh, just this crazy assemblage of sticky pistons. And uh, so we have a regular piston here and a, a sticky piston here. And basically what this is is an infinite trigger system that goes all the way up uh, the machine. And as soon as you place a redstone block right here on the ground, uh, it will push up all of these blocks into place and they will all turn into missiles. Then of course we will actually come back here and we will update this trigger, uh, this whole giant trigger system that runs uh, vertical up the machine as well. And what will happen is it will yank out uh, this redstone block used to update this piston uh, with these sticky pistons. It will yank out that redstone block sending all of the uh, rest of the missiles firing off in the middle. So at the same time if you actually look to uh, the sides of the machine here, uh, right here and right here, all the way up. That is actually the infinite uh, trigger system that, uh, the infinitely expandable trigger system, sorry, uh, that can uh, be activated at the same exact time as this tower of uh, first missiles that you uh, launch off. So uh, with all that being uh, known, I, I know it's, it's a lot to take in at first, but uh, just seeing it is much easier. So out here, uh, no, I didn't say anything. Uh, way over there, we have a giant wall of glass, and we're going to see how much damage we uh, can actually overall do to that uh, piece of glass. So starting up, we have to go ahead and get rid of the shield on Galactus to fire any of the missiles behind these missiles. So yeah, uh, there is actually there are uh, on each wall 128 missiles. So uh, there's 128 dud missiles on the front that are just completely made of endstone. Now the reason that they are completely made of endstone is just to basically cripple the opponent's bot. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and fire off all the endstone missiles and then I'll show you how to fire off the rest of the bot cripplers. So uh, coming in this direction, what we're gonna go ahead and do uh, from any start point is you can go ahead and just look at uh, this block here, go ahead and place a redstone block, then as soon as you remove it, uh, this one missile will fire off. Then we can actually switch back to our flint and steel and update that whole trigger system going up. And now, as you can see, we have launched the entire middle section of the machine. Now, with that being known, you can actually see here that pistons have now been dropped into place for all of our uh, dud cruiser missiles. And all we have to do now is take one step forward uh, and it will fire off that entire wall. So obviously you can see the uh, the need for uh, two pilots here. So we're going to go ahead and just do that and the entire machine, I was standing in the wrong spot, uh, the entire machine uh, will move forward and once the crazy lag stops, I can go ahead and look around. There we go. And you can see that we have just fired off the entire first wall of 128 missiles off of Galactus at once. Now, uh, yeah, as you can see, the visual uh, delay on all of these blocks is pretty immense. So, yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but as you can tell here, Galactus is still good to go. Now, right here, you can tell that it has dropped back a little bit, and that is only because we must update the engine one more time before it can actually take a step. So, as you can tell right there, we have just realigned the rest of Galactus. So, yeah, go ahead and show you really quick. Now, as you can see, uh, all we have to do is update the next wall of missiles and the the actual missiles themselves will fire. But uh, if you want to fire off these missiles at any time, all you'll need is a redstone block and a block of choice to actually uh, build up at. Now, 
I say that this is the best spot to actually build up at and place uh, your blocks. You want to go ahead and place a redstone block here, and you can see the chain reaction that happens all the way down the row. Then all you have to do is simply update uh, this sticky piston right in front of the redstone block you just placed, and all of these missiles will update one another in a series of uh, update events, sending them off in this crazy cool looking pattern. Now, of course, that is the same all the way up uh, with that being in mind. Redstone block, redstone block. You can go ahead and just keep firing those off all the way up the machine. Now, of course, I'm gonna go ahead and fire off the next wall of missiles, but a cool thing about Galactus, something that I really enjoy about it, is that if you do not want to fire off an entire wall of missiles at once, you do not have to. Let's say I just wanna go ahead and fire off these uh, seven missiles right here. Well, all I have to do is come up to this downward facing sticky piston relative to uh, the chain of where the missile is. Go ahead and update it downwards and as you can see we have put all the pistons in place for just that one piece but all the other pistons are uh, still up in their respective locations. So knowing that what we can go ahead and do is actually come back down this way and update uh, <laughs> the sticky piston which of course is, you know, takes. So all I have to do is put a redstone block on it and you should do one of those. So next up as you can see I'll go ahead and uh, glitch through because of all of the lag, but as you can see, we've only fired off seven of the total missiles on Galactus, which uh, honestly is really cool. You can aim uh, to which section or which segment of uh, your opponent's robot you would actually like to fire at. And I think that's a really awesome uh, feature on uh, Galactus. So of course, uh, to fire the next wall of missiles, it's actually really easy. All you do is come up to uh, right here. You have these like little archways uh, where your uh, pathway is, and you want to come to the front where there is a sticky piston facing backwards. Make sure, of course, that this is uh, your next row. You do not want to update the row behind another row or else you could be seeing some fireworks inside the machine, and that's never good. So uh, in order to do that, what you want to go ahead and do is just look at this block here and update it, and as you can see, it updates all the way up the machine, and Galactus is now primed to fire off the next row of missiles so we have to go ahead and update this one time to realign it and then one time to actually take a step. So Glaskus is going to go ahead and take a pretty mighty step and I know I keep falling through but that's just because I'm uh, trying to move and get out of in front of the robot so you can actually see uh, what's happening. So as you can see we have now fired off the entire second wall of missiles uh, which actually have TNT on them which uh, at full speed are flying across the map. So yeah, that's gonna cause some pretty significant damage if only seven missiles did that. So that's gonna be pretty awesome to see. So we'll go ahead and just honestly, just go check that out really fast. <laughs> So yeah, as you can see, just one wall of missiles is still going to do a pretty significant amount of damage. So we're going to go ahead and come back to Galactus really fast. And we're going to make our way into the machine. And uh, of course, with the next wall of missiles, you can actually go ahead and fire off, of course, just unique segments as well. But I'm going to go ahead and just aim at this block, update it, and as you can see, that will update all the way up the machine. We can come back over here, update it once so it uh, realigns, and then update it one more time so we take a step. And as soon as we take this step, the entirety of Galactus will move again. And as you can tell, all the rest of the missiles will be launched. Now as we're waiting for uh, this third wall of missiles to actually hit the uh, giant glass block over here. What I wanted to go ahead and show you is something that uh, I didn't actually get a chance to visualize in any of the uh, videos that Galactus is in. The one video that Galactus is in. It's the one weapon that I actually didn't get a chance to show. So let's go ahead and realign uh, 
Galactus because you want his front legs to be realigned. If I can get out of this crazy onslaught of blocks, all you have to do is actually uh, come down here and place a redstone block right here. And as you can see, it will update this entire chain of uh, blocks. And then you can actually come down this way and uh, <laughs> zero tick everything out of the way and grab it again. And as you can see, that's going to go ahead and uh, fire off. Now all you have to do is, with Galactus, take one step forward, uh, which will go from the side this time. Take one step forward, and that in, in the entire uh, front snake part of that should all fire off. Yeah, so there you go. So you got like a, a nice, awesome uh, trip wire as well coming off of the legs of Galactus, which you don't actually even have to worry about uh, these little pieces here because they will be pushed forward by uh, these legs here, and eventually these pieces will drop back to these redstone blocks and catch back up with the machine and keep moving forward. So yeah, uh, Galactus by far uh, one of my craziest inventions. It definitely has a lot of missiles, a lot of perks, and it does an insane amount of damage. So yeah, with all that being known, that is how you use Galactus properly, and of course I hope everyone enjoys it. There, I've actually uh, been uh, kind of revealing little secrets as I go along, like uh, with the Megalodon, I kind of did the missiles behind missiles, which was just basically like, uh, you know, the beginning stages of Galactus, of missiles behind missiles behind missiles. So uh, with this one, I've shown you guys the mini missiles, the mini cruiser missiles, and there's actually uh, a four wall uh, version of Galactus uh, in the works that actually does fit cube hamsters, uh, slime block, uh, slimestone robot tournament, actual, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, well the word's not coming to me, the actual size limit, there we go. Uh, so yeah, the 64 by 64 by 64, and it's a four wall Galactus with mini cruiser missiles, and it leaves uh, less debris in the air, so if let's say, you know, the missiles erupt or something in the middle, it's not going to leave too much debris in the way uh, for the other missiles behind it to keep going, which was a uh, big flaw in uh, the tournament itself. So yeah, with all that being known, you guys, uh, that is how you pilot Galactus. But that's going to do it for today's video, you guys. I really hope you all enjoyed it. Of course, if you did enjoy the video, you can let me know by leaving a like. And if you want to see more videos like this one, or just what I have in store for upcoming machines and creations, I encourage you to subscribe. I'm definitely just getting started. As for the rest of the updates, I want to touch on the request builds and how I'd like to start doing some of the smaller request builds you all have requested to actually get request videos uploaded. Of course, it uh, won't be right away but you can definitely look forward to the return of those videos in the future now a quick disclaimer I do not mind if you guys use any of my robots in your videos all I ask is that you give me credit for the builds in your descriptions and with it a link to my channel please that is all I ask as these robots all took hundreds of hours to actually build so I just feel really close to them you know so, of course, uh, a mention in the video would be awesome too, but if it's set to music or something like that, then I completely understand. Uh, of all the other videos on my channel, there's one that I've really wanted to branch out on, and that is War of the Machines. In all honesty, I'd like to actually film a War of the Machines movie, which of course I would upload part by part until it was completed. The reason being uh, is I could actually now use the full potential of the PC version of Minecraft to make it as visually appealing and amazing as possible. Now, I do want to return to uh, weaponize it as well, but a big video series I feel I should bring back is how to build giant robots in Minecraft. And get back to showing you all how to make your own crazy contraption, uh, contraptions, which in the long run would be more useful to you, uh, the viewer. Of course, I will still be uploading brand new machines, including some I'm currently working on, but just didn't mention in the video as I'd like to keep some very awesome 
surprises for later. Uh, and lastly, I encourage everyone to follow me on Twitter. I've been uploading lots of teasers for new machines and videos. So Twitter is an awesome place to get info on what I'm building next and to get more involved in the machines I build before I actually post videos of them on YouTube. But with all of that being said, I really hope you all enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you had a good time. And until that next video, you guys, uh, later late. Thank <laughs> you.